Hey guys, welcome back to Toddler Mom Monday. My name is Jessica, and this channel is all about mothering young kids. You'll find family vlogs here, along with toddler-specific mommy advice. If that sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would subscribe before you leave today. Today's video is gonna be about preparing for daycare. toddler teacher. So I have a unique perspective to offer as both a teacher in daycare and as a mother who has put a toddler in daycare before. My son Joey was in daycare from six weeks old all the way up until he was just almost two and then I had his baby sister and we made the choice for me to stay home. I'm going to break this video up into four parts, four really important parts so please stick around until the end. Part one, Hype your kid up for daycare. Once you've made your choice and you've got your start date, start telling them about it, even if they are just two years old. I would call it school because I just think it's fun that way, especially if they've got older siblings that do get to attend school. Oh, Joey, you're gonna get to go to school soon. This is gonna be so cool. Make sure that you're excited. Even if on the inside you're screaming and crying and you're scared, be excited on the outside because they can feel it and they're paying attention even when you don't think they're paying attention. That's true for everything. But especially with something new like this, so like a big transition that you're about to make, make sure that they know that mommy is so excited, mommy thinks this is a good thing, and mommy wants them to go and have fun and be safe. As the days get closer for them to actually be going to daycare, keep talking to them every single day. Ooh, in a couple of days you're gonna get to start your school two more days and you're gonna get to start your school. All those good things just plant the seed in their mind that this is just gonna be so cool. Part two, be prepared. Things you should bring, at least two sets of extra clothes, maybe even three if you've got an especially uh, active kid. Make sure that the clothes that you're packing for them and the clothes that you put them in are play clothes, not cute dressy clothes that you're going to be upset if they get dirty or if they get paint on them. Because the truth about daycare is that there's a lot of kids and they do a lot of really fun, messy activities. There's always going to be outside time unless the weather is super severe and you're going to pick up a messy child pretty much every day. View that as a good thing because they've had an awesome experience. They're getting socialization. They're getting exposed to activities and things that you may not be doing at home with them. And then of course you're going to want the basics. Diapers, wipes, cream, any kind of lovey that they have. Um, you know, a binky or a little stuffed animal or a blanket. You're definitely going to want their blanket if they're toddlers because daycares do nap time. Make sure you get a bag that can actually hold it all. It's so fun to get like the cute little toddler backpack but in the interest of keeping your child's things all together and making sure that nothing gets lost or accidentally taken home by a little friend, make sure that you have a bag that's big enough to just completely contain all of your child's belongings. And then some daycares require this and some daycares don't, but just to be safe, I would write my child's name on everything. I think I did actually, like everything. Because here in the state of Washington, the ratio for teachers is one to 10 two and a half year olds and one to seven two-year-old, which is a lot. That's a lot of blankets, that's a lot of hats, that's a lot of coats, that's a lot of little lubbies. And after a while of having the same class, you start to just know who's is whose. But I had, oh man, I had a class once that had three little girls with three pink blankets that were all extremely similar. And of course, each girl is like, that's mine, <laughs> to every single blanket. So if you've got a tag on the blanket, write their name on it. Same thing, tag on their coat if you don't want to write directly on the coat. Write their name in Sharpie on the tag. Or if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to like, damage the coat by putting their name on it permanently, use masking tape and put tape over the tag of the coat or the blanket and then just write their name on the tape. Same thing goes if they have like a special cup that they need to bring or like a bottle or something like that. 
Binky, just any way that you could possibly get their name on it, at, like at your comfort level, definitely do that. That's like a huge good tip to do and it's so helpful to the teachers and then so helpful for you too, just to make sure that your kid's stuff isn't getting lost. The other thing that I recommend, please don't bring toys to daycare. A lot of daycares have rules against that and parents don't listen and I totally get it. Like 100%. I said I would never bring, I would never let my child bring toys anywhere. Just like moms all say things before they actually have kids and then they realize, oh, well, he'll scream his head off if he doesn't get to carry the action figure wherever he goes. Like I said before, the ratio of kids to teacher is a lot to handle. And when you let your child bring a toy to daycare, you being kind of unintentionally unfair to other kids who didn't bring toys from home. You run the risk of that toy being lost amongst all the other toys in the classroom. Even if you put their name on it, it still runs the risk of being lost. And it's also a huge, like, oh, huge stress on the teacher to have just that one extra thing to keep track of all day long. Again, it's just when I had kids that would bring toys to daycare, I would let them play with it for a few minutes and then I would let them know, you know, it's time to put it in your backpack. Because all the other kids in the class would swarm that poor child and want that toy because it's not part of the normal toys in the classroom. And yeah, just to avoid a whole lot of stress for everybody, please leave your toys at home or in the car. Or maybe you could work out a routine where they're allowed to carry the toys to the classroom but then they have to put it in their backpack. That could be great too. And then the teacher and you can kind of be on the same page of like, yeah, that toy needs to stay in their backpack. And you guys have that good communication going, which is the next point that I'm going to get to. Part number three, communicate with your teacher. So if you're really nervous about dropping them off at daycare or you know like 100% they're going to be really upset, um, communicate that. Let them know ahead of time or let them know at drop off, like, hey, I'm really, I'm really worried. Like, I know he's going to be really upset when I leave. That is like welcomed. Teachers want to build relationship with you and it's so good to build relationship with them. Can that's your opportunity to like bi start building the team to take care of your kid. They'll probably ask, you know, well, what are some things that he loves to do that I could like set up for him? And if like what time do you think that you'll probably be dropping off each day? If you if you're going to be dropping off at a really consistent time, then um, some teachers might go a little bit of an extra mile for you and just make sure that that activity that they really love to do is available for them. Within reason, um, obviously we're not going to take, you know, paint out at 8 in the morning or anything like that, but if they love the trains or if they really love to color on paper um, or if they really love Play-Doh, anything like that, let them know that like, oh yeah, he really gets excited for that. He'll play with that forever and ever. And that's such a good tip for your teacher too, to help them, to help your child like ease into being dropped off. Also, that's your opportunity to let them know any like special tips that you might have for that, for, for the teacher, for your baby. What comforts them? Do they like to have their back rubbed? Do they like to have their hand held? Do they like to be picked up? Do they like to be left alone? Um, do they like to have their lovey if they're upset? <clears throat> do they like to sit and read a book? Um, just totally communicate that to the teacher. Any, because you're the parent, you got the inside scoop. So just let your teacher in on that so that they can do their best to make your child comfortable at drop-offs. Just kind of mentally prepare that the first two weeks are gonna be super rough, especially if your child's never been in daycare before and you just know that you have a really sensitive child that is not going to want to be parted from you. Just kind of have it in your mind that the first probably at least two weeks are going to be a really hard adjustment and the best thing that you can do is just be super consistent and super upbeat. If you could drop off at the same time every single day then your child will be able to build that expectation. We're going to school. When I get to school it's going to be snack time because you're always showing up at snack time or you're always showing up at craft time or whatever. So even if you could do that for your child, even if you don't necessarily work at the same time every day, um, you're paying for the hours for daycare. So um, being consistent at drop-off times will help so much with that really hard transition. Okay, so this is leading me into the last thing, which is my special note about saying goodbye. Different parents say goodbye in different ways. 
and some work really well and some are just like why'd you do that <laughs> please don't ever sneak away from your child imagine how they feel when like they've been brought to this new place and hyped up to go they're getting comfortable they're starting to play with friends and then they look up to find mommy and she's gone you got to avoid the bad goodbye but it's gonna you're gonna pay for it the next day because they're not going to want to play because they're going to be afraid that if they start playing they're going to look up and you'll be gone so even though it's going to be hard even though it's going to hurt um, please do your child the favor of saying goodbye even if you have to say goodbye as they're crying as they're yelling for you go ahead and do it i also recommend just having eye contact with the teacher or even you guys can make a little game plan ahead of time if you want of just like hey like do you think that you could pick him up for me and i could say goodbye to him and you could just hold him until I get out the door? Um, or do you think I could say goodbye to him and then you could try to like get him involved in an activity and then I could go? Just like make a little mini game plan and that makes it a lot easier for, for you saying goodbye. They're probably gonna cry and be really upset because yay, we got hyped up for school but maybe we didn't realize that that meant mommy was gonna go away. So don't sneak out, that's really just not a great idea. Um, and don't linger too long. Most teachers are going to definitely welcome you to linger for a little bit, especially the first couple days, but just keep in mind that the routine and tone that you're setting for drop-off days one, two, and three are going to be what your child's expecting all the rest of the days. So, and you've got to get to work, right? So I would not linger any longer than maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes just because it starts to feel like to the child it starts to feel like you're not going to leave and like you're gonna stay and play with them and then it's kind of like a secondary shock of like oh wait you're not staying oh no for saying goodbye don't sneak out try not to linger too long just saying too long you could totally linger you're very welcome to linger um, just not too long and then if your child is super upset oh boy um, Say your goodbyes in the sweetest, most loving way that you can, and then go. Trust your teacher. Go. If you wait outside the door, and you listen to your child crying, and you feel that too much time has passed, and that you're going to need to go back in there, and then you do, oh man, the beasts that you will create. Because your child is never going to turn to their teacher for comfort because they know that if they cry and cry and cry, mom is outside listening and will come back. And I'll just also say, you know, trust. Trust, it's so hard. Trust the daycare teacher. There's definitely, you know, you've heard hor horror stories on social media and stuff. So we know that there's bad apples out there, okay? But in my experience teaching and having my own son in daycare, most of us as teachers, really want to be there and it's one of those jobs that like you're not really in it for the money like at all <laughs> most daycare teachers are in that profession because they love little kids and they love being that trusted safe place for them and they want to be that important person in your child's life so when you drop your child off at daycare try to remember that like why is the teacher there she doesn't have to be like She's probably there, most likely there, because she wants to be. She cares about taking care of kids for mommies while they have to go to work. So trust, communicate, and don't go back in the room. <laughs> I hope that I've covered everything. I think that I have, at least the big things. Good luck dropping your little one off at daycare. I promise you if you're consistent and you keep that communication open that everything will work out just fine. It can be a really hard transition sometimes for little ones, but in the whole five years that I taught daycare, I only ever had one child who just like could not cope. Like over two months of crying every day just couldn't cope. One child in five years. So take comfort in that. Um, children need consistency. It takes time to build routine. It takes time to build trust. And it's up to you as the mommy to set the tone. So, good luck. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up for me. 
subscribe before you leave today and I will see you in the next one.